I'm making this message. I want to talk about some things. Because I'm wanting to do it differently here in 2024. On my YouTube channel, on Patreon. I want to revamp my website, which is a slow process. Organization has been key. It's like this big word I've been working with this year. Organization. It's only February. I got the old Excel spreadsheet out and then created January, February, March in order to create dates that I want to post things on YouTube, on Patreon, and on my different YouTube channels even, and how I want to navigate how I'm expressing myself to the world. But this conversation isn't just about technical things like this. It's about self-reflection. And I've been in this like place of self-reflection for a lot of years now. I'm always in a place of self-reflection, but particularly since April of 2020. April of 2020 was kind of a weird month because I had this vision. And in this vision, I received, it, it lasted a month long. I mean, it wasn't just a day, it wasn't just an hour, it was weeks. And it was easy to step into it any time I wanted to check on what is this information that I'm receiving. Basically, I was shown, just hear me out on all this stuff. I was shown these colossal alien spaceships. And they were humongous. They were the size of whole countries. And inside the alien spaceships, there were generations of human beings living on the spaceships happily. With all different kinds of alien beings living on the spaceships too. I mean, we're talking about whole country-sized, colossal-sized spaceships, people living and thriving in an environment on a spaceship, okay? So I was getting messages that were letting me know that I, I had completed my work as Abby Normal, okay? I, I was no longer Abby Normal, Abby Normal's Wisdom Quest. I was no longer YouTube, all this. I'd completed my work. And whenever I get a message like this, I'm very careful because it's very easy to receive a message that's profound, but what am I going to, what, how does that relate to my human reality? So when I received this message and it was clear as all get out and I could feel the love and the excitement, the extraordinariness of it all. And it was there, it was there, it was there again and again and again. I, I was shown a picture of a koi fish pond. And I was shown that these koi fish is like the human race and they were bumping into the walls of a very small pond. And that I was in the pond and I was trying to, trying to speak basically, trying to be heard, trying to, to help create something that was never going to be created. It was as weird as that. I was in the illusion that I was making a difference. This was a completely loving message. Because it was showing me time and the time it takes for souls to evolve, for the human race to evolve in overlapping time. And that I had participated in my role, I shared what I needed to share and it was time to move on. So much as I was going to the colossal alien spaceships. I'm pretty uh, careful <laughs> when it comes to believing everything I hear from interdimensional beings of the spirit realm because, again, it has to come back to reality here, human day-to-day -day life. So, naturally, it's like, okay, so I'm not on YouTube. I just stop doing YouTube. I just stop, you know, everything I've been doing. I just stop it. And then, and then what do I do? Just sit here and twiddle my thumbs. I just wait for you to pick me up um, sometime. <laughs> you know, it's like, when's this supposed to happen? There's never any real solid answer to those questions. So alas, I continue to do all that I know to do. That is my heart and soul of my life is to actually discover what it means to be human and to share what I've learned and to learn and grow with all of you because I can't, I can learn and grow by myself, but we're here to learn and grow together. If, if we were meant to just learn and grow from within ourselves, then we wouldn't have a reason to long for each other, to have family, um, to work through conflicts, to explore loyalty, etc. So, so many things about being human. It's all about connection. What's odd is April of 2020, my YouTube channel has been at 18,800 subscribers for four years now, almost. It was the moment that my YouTube channel stopped growing. 
And so because this, because of this event in April of 2020, because of the unexpected change that has been prolongingly consistent, you know, I've been reflecting naturally on what is the meaning of who I am and what is the meaning of what I share and what is the meaning of YouTube and, you know, YouTube's changed. I've been on YouTube since 2013. And so I've noticed that YouTube isn't quite the same YouTube it used to be since the pandemic. These are things on my mind that I want to talk about because this is part of my life. This is part of my reality. And I've been through a lot of things behind the scenes that I have to live a personal life. And there's complicated sides to my personal life that, you know, I... I I just, it's, it's not a part of my business, you know, I've got to focus on what I can share to make it a better world. So I'm sitting down here and I, I've been wanting to make a message just to talk about things I'm doing. Yes, 2024 is going to be a great year for growth. I'm working with organization. I got the Excel spreadsheet for dates and goals that I have for each month and I want to get ahead of schedule. And I think for the first time I'll be able to accomplish that because my personal life is a lot more peaceful now than it's been in years. So that's a good thing. So all in all, I have this memory of April of 2020. I have these last few years and the strangeness of what my, my role is when it comes to expressing myself. One of the reasons why I started a YouTube channel was because I was desperate for an outlet to just express myself. I didn't need anybody to hear what I had to say. In fact, maybe I just needed to have an experience that put me out there so that somebody could hear me, but it was almost like you don't have to hear me, but that, that would be enough. I didn't expect that putting myself on YouTube would introduce me to my true nature, my true spiritual side and be able to share that with others. I had no idea that this was going to take me down a road where I was going to be doing psychic wisdom, energy healing sessions, and that it was, it was actually going to be a, a solid place for me to be doing my life's work. So everything has been about my life's work, which is based upon Abby Normal, Abby Normal's Wisdom Quest and discovering what is the best way that I can share what I've learned um, and continue to grow with sharing, which has never been an easy thing for me because I'm kind of a hermit type. I don't seek popularity. I don't seek, um, in some ways, I always have that kind of in the background of my nature is um, maybe a state of avoidance, um, a state of anxiety about people, which it's just so annoying to me because it's it's just a thing that's there. It's not really who I am. Who I am is somebody who loves to share, who loves to learn, who loves to hear what other people have to say. But I have these weird nuances like we all do. Maybe you notice them inside yourself where it's like, why do I have this weird thing uh, when it comes to being around people or this weird um, thing when it comes to public speaking or why am I holding myself back? I don't understand why I'm doing it. And so we have these weird things that we do that we're aware of. And sometimes we just can't, we have a thing that we can't really put our finger on. I have a thing that I can't put my finger on exactly when it comes to YouTube. And I feel like this video is me trying to figure out what that thing is as I'm sharing it with all of you because I have a lot of overlapping time and layers and memory and I still can't figure out what the thing is. And it has to do with self-expression. It has to do with, with all of this. So I don't really care about the alien spaceships and the, the, I mean, I think it's fun, it's cool and all that, but until they actually come here and whisk me away, it's, it's, it's just an energetic conversation. It's just a phone call. It's nothing more than that, but it'll always be an anomaly in the back of my mind. It's like when I met my future self, I had no idea that some aspect of me in the future was living the utter nightmare of human hell <laughs> found a way to reach me and witness the way that I was living and I could see through her eyes her version of the future earth and it wasn't good. 
It was unbelievably bad, <laughs> impossibly bad. And the anomaly about that is that I have felt I've lived this lifetime before. This isn't the first time I've lived this lifetime. So what does that mean? You know, so my life is always about these strange realities, but you know, what am I going to do with it? All I can do is say, hmm, that's interesting um, and keep moving forward. But it, I can't deny that's always somehow there. And I, my heart goes out to her and it's not necessarily easy to talk to her in a way that I felt her presence when I felt it. Never been able to recreate that except in a journey state. And I want it to be more astral level walking through my home where I can feel the real person is standing there. I just, just not quite integrated into the fabric of this material world. Its presence is felt, you know, that me's presence is felt. So, so I wanted to let you know, after sharing a few stories about the thing I can't really put my finger on, which I'm still trying to, to gather it in a, in a random conversation. I'm starting this year off doing something different, okay? And I don't, I don't know how to really, um, I'm creating energy activated thumbnails. I didn't know I was doing that. I just want to do something different with my YouTube thumbnails because I get bored. And I, I, I love consistency, but I also love change. And I need to change it up. <laughs> I just, like, I have to do something differently. And I, I, maybe I'll just do it for a week, a month, two years, ten years. I don't know. <laughs> so I, I started creating thumbnails using just random images. I was introduced to a uh, AI photo generator, deep dream generator. And so I've been generating images and using Photoshop to kind of blend the images together to create something interesting to look at. And it just was very uh, suitable for my creative senses. I feel that as a spiritual speaker, there's something of the political side of our world that is desperately loud in our ears, desperately loud in our auras desperately needing our attention. It's kind of the same message every single day. So if you tune into modern day politics, if I tune, tune in today and then I tune in three months, it's basically a bunch of the same drama that has no solution. And you just sit there and shake your head and say, okay, if things are this bad, why, why isn't anybody doing anything about it? Because the process of doing anything about it could take years. And there's just so much stuck in the mud that, and it's so aggravating and frustrating, just the political side of human life, that it, it's, just, it's just this thing I'm noticing, okay? That 2024, I wanted to explore what triggers me about human life and what triggers me about politics or what triggers me about these bandwagon movements, what triggers me about local society or the society of the world, what triggers me most, in order to know myself. And something that's helped me with these trigger points is creating abstract images. And I just have been creating abstract images behind the scenes. <laughs> and then I've been creating some abstract images here in my thumbnails. And that's something I wanted to tell you guys about the strange message that I don't really know the point of it other than just to vent and share about things. 2024 organization, planning, getting ahead of schedule, doing these energy activated thumbnails is like this creative therapy for the triggering society, right? What are the solutions in this society and how am I a solution in the society on YouTube? YouTube's different now. Is a spiritual speaker still a value in a YouTube society okay so if youtube is a community truly it's it's a, an online community so yes it's a society of its own type how is a spiritual messenger um, useful in today's political modern day society of conflicts and confusion and opinions and trigger switches and craziness <laughs> truly does a spiritual message create therapy is it sought after? Is it wealth and value in our society? Is a philosophy 
Um, if I'm talking about alien banks, when what's most important is um, understanding who's going to be the next president, it's pretty dang important. Um, it's probably more important than it's ever been in politics is a presidential election. But then you could go on to say, well, what power does a president really have and who's really running the show? I mean, we can continue to talk about this because politics is modern day times right now, trigger switches, etc. All right, so I'm gonna tell you another thing that comes to mind in this random message. So I created an energy activated thumbnail because Valentine's Day is coming up and I wanted to make a message with Aphrodite because Aphrodite means a lot to me. And I found myself kind of emotionally upset. It's, it's emotional even to talk about it right now because I told her, what is it going to matter? It just feels like Aphrodite, what is it going to matter? Who the heck is going to care in modern day times about Abby Normal's channeled message with Aphrodite? And it takes me back to the koi fish pond, it takes me back to the colossal spaceships. And that Abby Normal is complete, which is a thought I'd never had in my mind because I felt like I finally found myself. Whether it was perfect or imperfect, whatever it was, I was building something of me. And I got to be me in my life and that was precious. It's very precious when you get to be yourself and get to be who you are in a way that can support financial means. It's like one of the most precious things any one of us could have, and it needs to be protected. Small businesses need to be protected, especially people that, that want to offer something of beauty and value to, value to society. I'm not a religious person. I'm a spiritual person. I'm still offering love, and love is something society needs. And I found myself frustrated because I created this energy activated the photo, and it was so beautiful. It reminded me of Aphrodite. And uh, I felt oddly defeated, like I was hitting this pinnacle moment of wondering what is the point anymore of sharing a voice that society doesn't want to listen to. And I asked myself, this is big, you know, well, this is a big, this is a big, what, it, what is it that I'm deciding about my own voice that's not important? What is that I'm deciding about the YouTube channel? Because in four years, I have neither gained nor lost. It is always maintained for four years. I had a conversation with Daryl Leaves about my YouTube channel, which I wanted to be a little bit more in depth. <laughs> it was more on me to ask questions that I didn't really know what the questions were. In order to gather answers, I was hoping that he could fill in the blanks that I couldn't fill in for myself. And naturally, it comes down to technical things like, um, what's your thumbnail? How are you introducing your videos? How do you get to the point? Um, you know, is this YouTube channel all about me or is it about the viewer? And these are really good thoughts. I started YouTube as a self-absorbed act, you could say. It was a desperate need to heal myself, a, a suicidally depressed, lonely person that didn't matter in the world. I mean, I, I was in so much pain. Like, everything that I am today was born from that. I can't figure it out. I don't think I ever will. I never was a popular person. I never could figure it out. I, I never even wanted to figure it out. The reason why it matters to me now is because, is because my business is a part of it, yes, but I'm noticing that the world is not seeking love anymore, it's seeking, seeking a solution to this conundrum that is insane. In society, the trigger switch, the politics, the drama. And where is love, you know? Like, where is it where we talk about love again? Where is it where we talk about the beauty in each other again? Where is the energy activated thumbnails that, that bring beauty to the world? Where's the healing? 
It's right here. I have a channel with a thousand videos. Seeking to know thyself in order to teach others the joy and adventure of knowing yourself. And that it's healing. It's amazing and it's weird. This isn't me just spouting off some kind of uh, delusional conversation. This is me sharing my authentic story. <sighs> so I was telling myself, making this thumbnail with Aphrodite, and I was thinking about how I'm making changes, but I'm not really sharing it with you guys, what's going on in my world or what's in my thought processes. And that I wanted to add that to my to do like something where each month I could give you an insight into the conflicts that I'm struggling with, what I'm noticing about myself and the world. Um, it might be politically related. I'm really intrigued by politics right now because it suits my intrigue about human nature. And I, I'm curious about what makes a human being avoid their integrity. Um, something that is a red flag to me is when a human race decides they don't have to be honest, but then they speak as though they are speaking nothing but the truth. That's a very, very, very bad place for us to be going into. Especially if children start to adopt that as the way, there's going to become a development of adults that are going to be renouncing the truth as their basis, as the foundation of our exchanges. But that's just a possible fear um, of the future, of what could happen. But the fact that I'm witnessing it right now is a red flag, but it, it had to develop into this from some point in time. It's not like we just magically became this way. We developed into this way. So I think about stuff like this. And I'm thinking about ways that I can make videos differently. Maybe try doing shorter messages. I'll tell you this sort of background about my like loathing of shorts. Because I, I know how vulnerable a human mind can be, okay? So if we just got rid of our cell phones entirely, we would start to see each other again. And we would start to appreciate the long conversations and the getting outside and spending time in the, the community park or seeing kids playing sports and um, go play tennis or go, go outside and play some chess, um, doing things together. So the cell phone, while it, you could say it creates a global community where we can access each other through the internet, etc., it creates a, a wall. So this tiny little phone is actually a wall that is between each other, okay? So you'll see the odd photo where you, it looks like um, two lovers, 16-year-olds uh, somethings, you know, at, <laughs> out to dinner and they're both on their cell phone. It's like, where is the exchange? Like, where is the ITI? Where is the holding of hands? Where is the true communication at? And so I find these to be interesting images, but we can't forget the images that are beautiful too. Um, because there is a lot of love still in this world. And one of the things I was talking to Aphrodite about, because it seems like she's uh, prompting me to share more of a connection, right? As she's prompting me um, indirectly. I just know I need to make this message um, somehow, some way. <laughs> um, to share something of my authentic place, even if I don't have it all clear yet, okay? Just to talk, all right? Um, that love isn't dead. And that love is connection. And that connection can happen. And... It's helping me to self-reflect. It's helping me to discover something new in time. So what you don't know is that I did a Valentine's Day video with Aphrodite that I got very frustrated with. I'm going to post it on Valentine's Day, so you're going to know the video. I'm probably posted the day before Valentine's Day. So one of the things about YouTube algorithms, which is very annoying to me, <laughs> is that you need to post on the same day at the same time, and that, that's like a thing. Um, so I was in the habit of doing that, but it was like, 
what is the perfect day at the perfect time for things to post and the only way I can be consistent is to ensure I make videos ahead of time in case something happens and I can't exactly post. So these are the things in the back of my mind about um, the constructs of having a YouTube channel that could grow. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like, what happened to my YouTube channel? It just like fell off the radar or something. Either A, people are changing and I'm just not what people are seeking. Or A, I have changed and I'm just not what people are seeking. Or YouTube has changed and I just don't fall into the YouTube style these days. Um, but I made that video with Aphrodite and it frustrated me because I'm starting to... to to discover something important about myself that I don't like, okay? Um, I don't like the fact that I'm a spiritual speaker and I talk about dark things. I, I'm so sick of, of talking about... Like, I want to be a spiritual speaker that only talks about beautiful, loving things. And when I go into a journey, I will go into the darkest places to look at conflicts that people don't want to look at. People just want to look at beautiful things just like me. But I didn't come here to be the spiritual speaker that just says nice things. I came here to be a spiritual speaker that gets you to face something ugly in the mirror. And I hate that about myself. <laughs> I don't like it. Because people can't understand how important it is. And it's important to me. It's important that you see how beautiful our ugliness is. So that we don't loathe it anymore. So that we can see that it's precious to our learning, our growth, and what makes us original. And authentic people. And not people that just say convenient things and become shallower by the day. It's the real richness. It's the real medicine of life. And so when I made that video with Aphrodite, I, I re-listened to it. And I told her um, that I wanted to redo it because I don't want to start. I don't want to make a message that is kind of dull and strange. And uh, it's part of the message for it to be this way. It's part of... A look at the hypnosis happening in our planet and how we're not we're not actively adding an ingredient of beauty we're getting kind of lost in where it exists anymore even I am you know maybe you guys know what I'm talking about I fall into the illusion of not being able to see myself clearly just like the rest of us, you know? I do it too, so I have to always be mindful of knowing myself even when I struggle to be that representation of knowing myself. I have to, to own that this is truly who I am. I'm a person of joy, I'm a person of laughter, I'm a person of creativity, but I'm a deep person too. And the only way to go deep is to go into the vulnerabilities, into the ugliness. And then from the ugliness will you find true heaven. So that's what I share. And I thought, you know, maybe Abby Normal's wisdom quest is more like into the darkness, um, into the true heaven. You know, something of, you know, enlightenment, empowerment, and love, yes. But I'm kind of a shadow worker. That's like the depths of my myself and who I am. I'm like a, a natural at it. I suffered with suicidal depression. You're going to go into a dark place for a very long time and then how do you get yourself out of that darkness? That's why I'm an excellent navigator of dark realms because I was in a dark place for so long. We don't realize that the reason why we have our pains in life is those pains are what make us truly magical. So what is that thing that you struggled with for years and years and it's just always going to haunt you in your life somewhere in the background? It's just always going to be there is actually what makes you truly incredible. So my suicidal depression, my struggles with loneliness, my struggles to fit in, my hermit type personality. Um, I have a lot of things like I have extreme struggles with self-worth. That's why I know stuff about self-worth. I even work on that with myself all the time. Self-worth is one of my issues. Um, I have to be mindful of it. Perfectionism is another one of my issues. 
I, I am such a perfectionist. I lose track that it's, it's okay to be a little rough around the edges. But I always strive for perfection. And what, what is, what is the, the ultimate level of perfection? You'll never find it. So I could work on a task for hours and never get it done. Like if I work on my website, perfectionism is going to take over and I'll never get it done. I, like I have this weird thing with perfectionism. So it's an achievement every time I share because my perfectionism could say, oh, that's not good enough, like the Aphrodite video. I might even be a perfectionist about this video and maybe not share it, but I'm pretty convinced I'm going to share it. Anyway, you know, I don't think I, I completed my thought on the whole shorts conversation. I'm just going to tell you that and then we're going to call it good here, but it's stuff I'm learning, okay? It's stuff I'm going to work on. I am going to start posting shorts. I'm going to start posting videos of different lengths. Um, I kind of want to do like, okay, about the shorts before I lose my train of thought. Um, I was not a fan of the shorts because you're giving people a taste of something that lacks the depth of that something. And so we're teaching the human race to avoid the depth and to choose the taste. So if you have thousands of tastes, which is what a short is. It's just a taste of something, okay? So you, you, you will taste a thousand videos, but know nothing because you didn't learn anything from it. All you are is creating a one-liner that you're going to spout off to somebody else who's going to absorb that one-liner, spout it off to somebody else. So it's actually an anti-learning process. It is um, a rewiring of the brain and uh, encouraging us to become more shallow. Choosing a taste of information instead of the depth of information. You'll find yourself just wanting to look at the news headlines and not actually open up and read the news. What is the news anymore? It's an opinion poll. It's annoying. Instead of just saying, this happened at this time, this person said this, this person said that, and then you make your own assessment. No, it's, don't you know this horrible piece of crap said this thing? Open for more crappy information. <laughs> That's what the news sounds like to me. It's just like, ugh, who did you hire to write this crap? It's all just your opinion. It has nothing to do with the news, which is just the basic facts. That's all it is, and you gather your own consensus. That's what the news always was. <sighs> so, alas, I will be giving you tastes of information. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, it's, it's like, am I selling my soul? Is this me selling my soul? If I give in to sharing 60 second shorts, which I've been exploring the last like two years or so, and I feel like I'm selling my soul, okay? Because I know this is not good. But if I give in to it, then I am feeding the demon. I, I, but it, you know, when I was a kid, I had this weird moment with my dad at the, the grocery store. And we were just buying a bag of baby carrots, okay? And he threw a fit because the baby carrots were like 20 cents more than they usually are. And he was insistent we will not buy these baby carrots and that anybody who sees this price will also not be buying the baby carrots and that the baby carrots will now reduce price and that once the price reduced, we'll buy it again. And I was like, Dad, it's 20 cents. It's, it's freaking 20 cents. It's baby carrots. So forevermore, I have this memory of the baby carrots, 20 cents. And I understand that economics a lot better now in my older years than I understood it back then. But I also understand that this is like the baby carrots. If I give in to 60 second messages in order to get my word out there that love still exists, Hi, I'm Abby Normal. Love still exists. I'm also feeding the demon that is going to um, challenge future generations to remember the depth of communication. And I renounce it. So I'm in a conflict here of uh, damned if I do, damned if I don't. It's, it's like um, choosing the lesser or evil. Um, so I, I have to live in these deep reflective states about how I make decisions, okay? <laughs> yeah. 
but I did put that on my to-dos for this year that I want to consistently share shorts and that, you know what, if that's what the human race seeks, um, I need to offer a taste of love information and from my Abby normal way, which might be kind of dark sometimes. But through the darkness, we will find the true light because you can only truly grow and you can only truly become brighter when you eradicate all the shadow from within, which is your fear. Which is kind of what this message is all about. So are the aliens and the colossal spaceships coming? Well, I got to see that and it was pretty cool. And I don't know, maybe there isn't any Abbey Normal anymore, but I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still chugging along. <laughs> now having this conversation with all of you. So the Aphrodite video will post the day before Valentine's Day on Tuesday. And then you can check it out and it's a total energy activation. It's a total message uh, awakening to love, awakening your, your eyesight. It's all about um, get back into the game. It's almost like we're sitting at a chessboard dozing off, not realizing it's our time to make a move. It's our time to make a move. And it's time for the light and the love to make its move and for that move to be heard and that move to make a difference. But it's all back and forth, you know, we're all learning and growing um, and we're all of the light anyway. It's interesting times. So thank you for taking the time to listen to a very long message from me. And thank you for being part of my YouTube channel. And you'll have to share your thoughts here um, what are you going through in 2024? What are you thinking about? Have you ever gotten some strange messages from alien beings that you're still waiting for some kind of conclusion? Did you have a future self come talk to you and you never forgot about it? Like, what does it all mean to you? We're spiritual people. We do exist in the world, you know, and uh, we are part of this reality. And this is the way I translate reality and this is the way that I work with love and communication. So thank you all so much for being a part of my life and part of YouTube and supporting me all these years. I wish you all a super awesome day and more to come soon.